Hey, I'm Ken, and this video is part three of my introduction to FlowLab series. Anyone can sign up for free at flowlab.io and follow along in their web browser. In this video, we'll add some behaviors to our game objects to start making them interactive. Let's begin by making our character respond to keyboard controls. We add behaviors directly to a game object by clicking it, selecting Edit, then clicking the Behaviors button. We could just add a predefined bundle to make our character controllable, but in this video, we'll be building up all the logic from scratch to demonstrate how to design custom logic using behaviors. Behaviors are how logic and game mechanics are built in FlowLab. Complex logic is created by assembling simple blocks, which can be linked together to operate similarly to an electronic circuit. Trigger blocks are activated by reacting to events that occur while the game is running. All game logic happens as a result of these triggers, so this is generally the best place to begin when adding new logic. In this case, we want to respond to the player's key presses by moving this character object around the level, so we'll click to add a new keyboard trigger. Most blocks have properties that can be accessed by clicking them. This one lets us set the key it will respond to, so let's start with the right arrow key. I'll click Change Key, then press the keyboard key I'd like to use, in this case the right arrow. I'd like this block to continue activating as long as the key is held down, so I'll select Repeating, then click OK. Now what we want is for the object to move when this key is pressed, so let's add a couple more behavior blocks. From the Logic and Math section, we'll add a number to store the speed. We'll set this number's value to 2 and give it a name. This is optional, but names make understanding complicated logic easier. From the Properties section, we'll grab a Velocity block. In Physics, Velocity is the combination of an object's speed and direction, which is just what we need here. OK, so we've added some behaviors, but they'll need to be connected together to do anything interesting. Behavior blocks have outputs on the right side and inputs on the left. The outputs of one can be connected to the inputs of another to form a link, so that the logic flows from left to right. This way, when one block outputs a value, the connected input of the next block is activated. Now when the keyboard key is down, it will activate the input of the connected number block. We'll connect the number block's output to the X input of the velocity, which will set the object moving to the right. To test the logic so far, we can run the game directly from this window. A speed of 2 feels kind of slow, but we can adjust this while the game is running. That seems better. Next we need to add a keyboard trigger for the left key and have it set the X velocity to a negative number to move left. OK, now she's moving both forwards and backwards, but it would be better if the sprite would face the direction she's moving, so let's add a flip behavior to handle that. Now she just needs to be able to jump, so let's add a keyboard trigger and a number for that. This time, instead of setting the velocity directly, we'll add an impulse to the object, which is a spring-like force. We'll send our value into the Y input this time, since we want the force to push upwards. Now we just tune the force a bit, and we have a playable character. As before, we can test by hitting the play button at the bottom. So our player now has custom logic to control her using the keyboard. In the next video, we'll add some animation to our player sprite. Thanks for watching. 